my AP statistics students. Welcome to another lesson in unit four, probability, random variables, and probability distributions. I'm Goldie and I'm here to make AP statistics easy for you. We are now in notes three, which is gonna cover Venn diagrams, unions, and intersections, all in the context of probability. So again, we're gonna be repeating mutually exclusive events and the idea of those, um, but also diving deeper into what it means to be independent um, and have union uh, of two events. So thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you get a lot of use out of this video. Grab your notes, settled in, and let's get started together. So in this set of notes, we're going to introduce the Venn diagram as a tool to help us with uh, determining some probabilities and then talk about some notation that we have going on with them as well. So Venn diagrams, you've probably seen a Venn diagram before just um, in your English class is usually where they first pop up as kind of an organizer of thoughts. Um, well, we're gonna use a Venn diagram to organize our probability. Now, Venn diagrams themselves don't necessarily appear on the AP exam, but they are a great tool that you can use to help answer some of the questions that are gonna appear on the AP exam. So that's what you gotta, uh, think of this as. It's a great visual representation of probability to help you solve some of those tougher problems. So the Venn diagram itself, we draw this big box around um, the, to the Venn diagram that we have. The box around the Venn diagram represents our total sample space. And remember the probability of our sample space is equal to one. So everything in that box should equal one. So if you're um, writing down probabilities and filling in probabilities in your Venn diagram, all of those should add up to one. Okay? What you're going to have um, is basically four different sections here. You have the middle section, okay, which you can probably just naturally remember that that's where both of them occur. We have this over here where we have A occurs but not B. This is where B occurs, but not A. And then we have a part out here. And out there, outside of the Venn diagram, but inside the box, that is where neither A or B occur, um, but it's still in the sample space. Okay, so you're gonna have four numbers that kind of fill in your Venn diagram. Now, union and intersection. We've talked about and and or, and the difference between finding the probability of event A or event B happening, and the probability of event A and event B happening. Or means the probability that either or occurs. Okay, that's called a union. And the symbol for a union is gonna be a U, almost looks like a U with no tail, okay? That's the symbol for a union or the symbol for the or probability. Intersection is the probability that both occur together. And that's called the intersection where they overlap. Um, we've kind of talked about the overlap in our last section of notes, but that symbol is gonna look, um, gonna look like that. It's like the union symbol, but upside down. <laughs> And I have some examples of some shaded in um, probabilities here. So let's look at this first one. A, B, both shaded in and the middle is shaded in. This represents the probability of A union B, okay? Or the probability of A or B happening. So you'll notice that both of them are shaded in and then either or is also shaded in, but not the entire box. Okay. Where we go to the right here and we have um, just the shaded in between where they overlap, that's going to be your intersection. The probability that A and B occurs, which is um, the probability of A and B happening. So they have to happen together. So we discussed both of these last section of notes, but now we're putting some notation to it and we're drawing up kind of a visual of it, just a general um, visual of what that, um, what that means. Let's get into a few others, okay? Here, you can see that A is not shaded in. The entire circle of A, including the overlap, is not shaded in, but everything else is. Everything in the box as well as B, okay? This represents the probability of your A complement 
okay? Your complement is not a happening, okay? So this is um, the probability of A not happening. Okay, so that shaded in region in our Venn diagram represents A not happening, okay? And then if we look at this other one, um, this the box is shaded in, but nothing in the circles is shaded in. This is the probability of A not occurring and B not occurring. Okay. The probability of A and B not happening together. And those are just a few examples of the visuals we can get from Venn diagrams. Um, we're going to see a couple more on the next page, and then we're going to apply this Venn diagram to help us uh, solve a problem. Okay. So example one says shade the probabilities for the following notations. So we got different combinations of unions, intersections, complements, all of those. So let's figure out how we can um, how we can solve these. So it says a and not B. So visually, you want to see, okay, where in the Venn diagram does A happen and not B, okay? So A happens right here, okay, and not B. So where in that circle does B not occur? That's going to be right over here. We had something similar just with the um, A on the last page, okay? But all of this region can't color it in too good. Maybe you can color it in a little better. But this entire region is where A and not B occurs. The next one, um, A complement union B. So this means not A or B occurs. Okay. So not A or B or both. Okay. So let's start off with the not A. Okay. Everything inside the circle is not A. Okay, so, or excuse me, everything inside the circle is A, so everything outside of the circle is not A. Okay, so since it's a union, it's going to be everything not A, which is all of this, or B. Okay, now where does B occur? B occurs inside the circle, so I want to shade in everything inside the circle. Okay, so now I have a visual representation of not A or B, okay? Everything except that little piece in there is shaded in. And this last one, not A or not B, okay? So that or is important because that or tells you, okay, not A is everything outside of A. So I'm going to start with that first. Or not B. What's not B? Okay, so this is B right here inside the circle. Not B is everything outside that circle. Okay, so there you have your representation of not A or not B. Yeah, okay, let's apply this to a problem. Okay, how can we use these visuals to actually help us solve, solve a problem? Now, as I said before, um, when you're drawing these Venn diagrams, sometimes your numbers that you draw in the Venn diagram are going to be um, probabilities, and sometimes they're just going to be numbers. Okay? In this example, we're going to fill in our Venn diagram with numbers. Okay? What do I mean? Let's see this. So in statistics class, you are interested in exploring the taste preferences of your classmates. You have two tastes, salty and sweet. And 25 students were asked if they prefer both, only sweet, only salty, or just neither in general. So here's the two-way table that shows that. Okay, so we say yes, salty, no salty, yes, sweet, no sweet. Okay. It says let A equals sweet and B equals salty. Draw a Venn diagram and find and interpret the probabilities. So the first thing is drawing the Venn diagram to help us answer this question. Okay, so we have A is sweet and B is salty. So first, I always say start in the middle. Okay, that's the easiest, sweet and salty. What number represents sweet and salty? That's gonna be the six right here, okay? So six is gonna go in the middle because there's six people that said yes to sweet and yes to salty. Outside here, 
We want to know how many people said yes to sweet, but no to salty, because that's what this um, uh, part of the circle represents. Yes to sweet, no to salty. That's going to be 11. Okay. So notice in the circle of A, if I add up 11 and 6, I get 17, which is the total in my sweet circle. Okay, that's good. That's what it should be. On the other side, B, to be in this, this area right here, we need to know who said yes to salty but no to sweet. Yes to salty, no to sweet is going to be 7. And again, look in the full circle of A, we, or full circle of B, excuse me, we have 6 plus 7 which gives us 13, okay, that said yes, salty. And then the last piece outside of the box right here, we want to know how many people said no sweet, no salty. And that's going to be one. Okay. <laughs> and now I have my Venn diagram filled in. And I filled my Venn diagram in with the counts from my table. Okay. So all of these counts, not the totals, okay, the totals you can use to kind of help you make sure you have all the numbers, but we just filled in our Venn diagram with those four counts. We could have filled it in with probabilities as well. And just to show you what that would look like, um, there were 25 total students. So if we were to ask what probability of students said yes to sweet, yes to salty, we would just take this and divide it by 25. And that would give us the probability that they said yes to sweet and yes to salty. <laughs> Same thing with each of these. We could have turned each of these into a probability. And if we added up all four of those probabilities, we would get one. Okay. Right now, if we add up all four of those numbers, we get 25. Okay. So your Venn diagram, you might be filling it in with actual numbers, or you might be filling it in with those probabilities. It's whatever is going to help you solve the problem. Okay. So let's find and interpret these probabilities okay. using our Venn diagram. So the probability of A and B, so that's the intersection, A and B, that's going to be 6. I see the 6 in the intersection there out of 25. So if I find that, I get 0.24. So that's the probability, and then just interpreting it. The probability a student in class, because that's where our 25, our sample space comes from, is just students in class, likes both salty and sweet foods is 0 0.24. So union now. Union is A or B or both, okay? So visually, think of where we would shade, <laughs> excuse me, to get um, that visual. We would have 11, 6, and 7. So what we're going to do for that union is we're going to add 11 plus 6 plus 7, and we're going to divide by 25, okay? That gives us point. 9, 6. And this is the probability a student in class likes either <coughs> salty or sweet foods. is 0.96. <laughs> okay, I'm going to keep going with these problems. If you wanted to pause me and try them on your own and then check the answers after you're done, you are more than welcome to, but I'm going to keep going and kind of explain these along the way. So the probability of A and B complement, okay? So A intersecting with B complement means where those two things happen together. So A and A happens in the circle and not B happens in this part of the circle. So we're gonna look at just 11 out of 25 for this. Okay. And this represents interpreting it, interpreting the symbols, it's the probability that a student in class 
likes sweet, but not salty foods. Not a union bee. So I'm going to kind of erase this, go through again. Not C, or excuse me, not A, union B. So for the union, everything outside of the A is not A. And then with the B, everything inside the circle is B. So what numbers are outside of A or inside of B? That's going to be 6, 7, and 1 over 25. This is just using um, the Venn diagram too. You can figure these problems out without using the Venn diagram and using the formulas that we learned in the last section of notes. This is good, um, especially for students who really like a visual. Some students really like the visual of the Venn diagram. If you're not really feeling it, that's no big deal. You can keep using the formula like we did last unit or last section of notes, excuse me, is, see, I can't talk and write at the same time. I'm having a tough time there. We got it there in the end. Okay, A union not B. Okay, so A union not B, so union. So A is everything inside the circle, union not B. Okay, so we have A are these two, union not B, is going to be with this one as well, okay, because that one includes the not B. So that's going to be 11 plus 6 plus 1 divided by 25 is 0.72, okay. You could have also figured this out with the formula, okay, because it's the union formula. What's the probability that A occurs? The probability that they like sweets is 17 out of 25 plus the probability of not B. Not B is going to be not salty. And minus their overlap. Where does someone like sweet but not salty foods? That's 11 out of 25. Okay. So that's using the formula and the table that we learned about in notes two. You can still get the same answer. So that's going to be the probability that a student in class likes sweet foods or does not like salty foods. Okay. So you can write that down as your interpretation. Let's look at the last one. Not A and not B. Intersecting, that means everything outside of A and B. So that's a 1. Okay, That's going to be 1 out of 25. 0.04, and if you're still writing down the interpretation there, that's the probability that a student does not like sweet foods and does not like salty foods. And that wraps up our lesson on notes three, Venn diagrams, unions, and intersections. Thank you guys so much for following along. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great AP statistics content. I will see you in the next video, and until then, I wish you endless statistical success, and I will see you then.